Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the different snap types in Cubase. Um, and moreover, I'll also touch on what the different grid types are, and I'll be talking about this quantized preset uh, panel here as well. So these three panels kind of work in conjunction with each other, uh, and depending on what you've selected for the grid type, um, different things are going to happen, as well as this thing here and as well as this thing here. Now for those of you who don't know, this snap on and off, what that is referring to is whether or not the cursor and these events are going to be snapped and moved to the exact position of the, uh, the grid or events, whatever you've selected here. And um, when you take it off, you can free scroll and you can free move whatever's um, whatever you have selected. It could be one event, it could be multiple events, etc, etc. Um, if you have the snap on, it'll snap to the beginning of the first event that you have selected, etc, um, etc. Et so now, uh, I'll run through all these different types. Um, this thing kind of confused me for quite some time. Every so often, um, I think it was when I installed updates this panel here would be set to bar and I'd be so confused because I'd have it on snap to grid um, and I'd be clicking on like 1 16th notes and it would only be um, snapping to basically a one on one and I couldn't figure out why and the reason is because when you have this set to bar uh, it doesn't matter what you have selected in the quantize panel, it's only going to be snapping to the actual bar. So each and every bar it's going to be uh, snapping to. If you have it on the beat, then these here, these are subdivisions of the bar, which are individual beats, it'll snap to the beats. And then if you have it to use quantize, it's going to use this panel to specify where the uh, cursor and the events are going to snap to you. So that's something that confused me for quite a while. I would, uh, I thought it was just a bug in Cubase that it wasn't recognizing what I was choosing under here. But uh, later on I read up and kind of figured out what was going on. So yeah, that's it. Uh, next, I'll actually run through all these guys here. Um, this is kind of self-explanatory. I think you you kind of get the gist of that. I'll set that to actually a quarter so it's easier to see. Um, now, all of these different snap types, um, there's grid, which is the most, it's probably the easiest thing to recognize what it's going to do. Um, it's just going to move the events to the actual grid that's aligned here. Now it also depends on what you have selected for your main ruler. Um, so this bar up here, it says three, four. I have that set to bars and beats. Now that's going to affect what this panel is going to be uh, offering. So if I switch it to seconds, now this is in seconds. And instead of using the bars and beats and the quantize, I'm now only uh, able to use these sub selections. So a thousand milliseconds, which is a second, um, I'm only allowed to snap to that. So uh, these here are seconds. This is five seconds, six seconds. I can go in these subdivisions only. I can go to, what would that be? 0.1 second. So I can go to these little 0.1 seconds. I can snap to that. Uh, point 0 0.01 seconds, which is a very high subdivision, um, or one millisecond, etc., etc. Now, if you switch it to, let's say, a time code, it's same thing. It has different kinds of subdivisions. Uh, I usually keep this on bars and beats because that's the way my mind thinks. That's the way I want to snap to, uh, is to an actual grid and being able to select. Um, how it's going to be snapping to the grid in these kind of subdivisions here. Uh, 
to show me how much time has passed, I have what's known as a ruler track, which is this guy here, and then I select this as seconds. And then I have both the bars and beats as my quantize unit, and then I have the actual time uh, in here, which is uh, more convenient for me. Cool, now, <laughs> kind of getting sidetracked. So that's the grid. That's self-explanatory, and I just demonstrated it. Uh, grid relative is quite similar, but it's kind of a specialty thing. So if we take the snap off, we'll move this guy slightly off from an actual um, quarter of a, of a bar, um, and then we'll turn the snap on. So when it's on grid relative, and I'll be moving this um, one bar over, uh, this here, you can see it's this distance away from this bar. If I was to now move it over, I can move it uh, exactly one bar over, um, one full bar over to wherever I'm moving it. So it kept the relative distance between the bar here and where it began and just moved it over exactly one bar over. So that's um, a very, it's quite a specialized way of quantizing. I don't know, I've never used that, but there's probably a time and a place where you'd want that. Um, maybe you don't have everything aligned specifically to the grid, um, but you have like a certain groove and you've worked hard on that groove and then you just want to move it one full bar over. Uh, that's a good way to do that is by using this thing here. Now the next one here, the events. This is going to snap the beginning of this and the ending of this event to other events in the project, so in this timeline. So right now it's not really snapping to anything. Then it snaps to this because it's recognized this event, this event, and that event. It's going to snap to that. Um, and it'll snap to that, um, whether it's the beginning of the event or the ending of the event. So let's kind of make some stuff here so that it'll make more sense. So now when we move it over, it's snapping. Right now it's snapping uh, the ending of this event to the ending of this event. Now the beginning and the beginning to the end, that sort of thing. So that's what the events does. Um, I'll skip the shuffle for now. The magnetic cursor is a pretty easy one to understand. Wherever the cursor is, uh, the events will snap to either the beginning of it or the ending of that event. So that's also quite useful. If you just zoom in, you have a specific place where you want something to snap to, move the cursor there, and then snap the event to the cursor, that's really handy. Um, and then there's any combination of those. You can have the grid plus the cursor, so these two together, the events plus the cursor, and the grid events and the cursor, so it's quite handy. Um, the grid relative is more of a specialized thing, and the shuffle is a specialized thing. So the shuffle here, what this does is it'll, um, let's say I'm moving this event uh, in between these two events, if I do that with the shuffle uh, snap type, when I'm dragging and dropping this thing, it's going to be moving everything out of the way and inserting this and then taking everything that I've moved and kind of squash that back. So if you have a look here, this blue I'm moving over here, it's going to be inserted. This stuff gets moved back to accommodate that move. And then these two here are snapping to where this event began, like so. So that's also kind of a highly specialized snap type, but it's really handy. Um, and if I was to move multiple events, it'll accommodate appropriately. So it keeps these events the way I've selected it, moves them, and adjusts these. If I was to do two, it would do very similar. It makes room for these two here by moving these over and then moves that one snugly to where this one began. 
So yeah, those are the different types and you can do these combinations here. Um, now that I know this, this is something I kind of just learned not too long ago. Um, I'll probably be using these different types a lot more often. Uh, something that's it's really handy. I've never <laughs> looked into it properly until lately. And I wish I would have known this beforehand because all of the editing that I've ever done, um, whether it's audio editing like here or within um, like a MIDI kind of phrase like this, this kind of relative um, relative grid would be handy. The snapping to events would be really handy. And I just, I was never using that before. Um, but now that I know about it, I'll be, I'll be using this more often. So hopefully you guys liked that. Um, there's probably a lot of you who do use this and probably a lot of you who do not use this, uh, extensively, but yeah, hopefully that's, a good tidbit for you guys. Uh, leave a like if you like this and leave a comment. Let me know what you've been doing, what you've been using, uh, whether or not this stuff made sense to you before, if you've looked at the manual or not. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, take care and bye-bye now.